Hi there. I'll have the video ready in just a second. Just hold on a moment here. Now if I just... Uh, and then there's... Uh-oh. Oops. Uh. Okay, think I got it. Here we go. Nick.com in 1998, a group of game creators would come together and form the Groove Alliance. They would then create the 3D Groove Engine, which would run all sorts of games, both original and for the sake of marketing big franchises. In the early 2000s, they would team up with the TV channel Nickelodeon by making games as part of the Nick Arcade series on the website Nick.com. These Nick Arcade games were downloadable and often took place in the different Nickelodeon shows. Their advertisements would feature someone getting up to some wacky antics before saying Nick.com. The other person in the room would then respond with, Oh. Yeah, it made no sense whatsoever, but it made an impression. One of the Nickelodeon shows, SpongeBob SquarePants, received considerable attention from the 3D Groove Engine. The developers were able to use music and voice clips from the show, so these games were a pretty big deal. In our last video, we took a look at their adaptation of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Unique as it was, the currency balance wasn't great, and the game became extremely repetitive very quickly. Goofy Goobers didn't even have fried ice cream. But at the end of the day, it was a simple driving game and wasn't trying to be much more than what it was. So now let's take a look at another 3D Groove SpongeBob game, and this one has a little story behind it. SpongeBob Saves the Krusty Krab was released in 2002, making it the first 3D Groove SpongeBob game. You could play a limited free trial of it on Nick.com, but you could also buy the whole thing. That is, until 2009, when 3D Groove's website went down and took most of its games with it. Nick Arcade also faded away over time, so this game actually wound up becoming lost media. Over the years, people were able to salvage the free trial, but the full game remained lost. Eventually, the full game, along with many other 3D Groove games, were recovered thanks to the work of many different users. Simon Edis of the E-Zone website, which created several 3D Groove games, even gave some of them out on his own accord. So did this game really deserve to be lost to the passage of time? Let's give it a go and see for ourselves. When you start things up, you're met with the instrumental version of the F.U.N. song from the show. This goes on for essentially the whole game, so you better enjoy it. Like I mentioned last time, it's astounding how such small games like this were able to secure the rights to use actual music from the show. Times sure were different back then. If we look at the instructions, we get the backstory that will never be shown in any capacity throughout the game. Plankton stole the Krabby Patties and littered them all throughout the ocean floor, so you have to find them all. As you can see, Mr. Krabs is terrified. We can't have that. This would later be the exact same premise for another Spongebob game called Krabby Quest. Now this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Isn't it Plankton's goal to steal the Krabby Patty formula? What does he accomplish by scattering them all over the ocean? I guess it's a way to sabotage his business rival, but if he had the Krabby Patties to begin with, why didn't he just extract the formula and be done with it? Did he do the thing in Krabby Quest that made them all explode without any elaboration? Obviously, if the patties are lost, Mr. Krabs could also have Spongebob make more, but according to the instructions, the restaurant is opening soon and they need those Krabby Patties. You're also warned about the jellyfish, which sting you. If you get stung enough times, you get jellyfish fever and lose. Was that ever a thing in the show? I guess they didn't want to say you die, but they could have said something along the lines of you'll be in no shape to work. They don't have to add a whole new disease to the Spongebob lore. There are also power-ups, but we'll take a look at those when we get to them. As with many other Nick Arcade games, the characters have locked expressions that don't change at all throughout the game. At least the viewpoint is entirely behind the character in this one, so it isn't as apparent this time around. There are three playable characters in this, Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward. Spongebob runs the slowest, but he's also the only playable one from the free trial, so let's start with him. At the very start, the controls take some serious getting used to. This is because the arrow keys move you in a locked direction and you can't smoothly transition from going one way to another. One cool aspect about this game is that you can actually change camera angles. You can play from afar, close up, or in first person. Fun as it sounds, I do not recommend anything besides the farthest angle. It's extremely hard to see anything from first person, and this game is not very friendly to this point of view. You're trying to find all the Krabby Patties in the level before the time runs out. 
The stage is the same in every level, but the coral platforms you have to jump on can change ever so slightly. There isn't a whole lot of variation in the 10 levels this game has to offer. This game is also very score-focused, which I guess mattered more back when the Nick Arcade was active and high scores might have actually meant something. Since there isn't any regulation nowadays, it's just a self-imposed challenge to get a high score. Also, I should mention that finding the Krabby Patties just isn't enough. You also have to get back to the Krusty Krab once you find them. So you can accomplish this very challenging goal, but still lose because you run out of time before you reach the restaurant. That always feels great. Now here come the jellyfish. These things are so persistent, it's actually baffling. Once they see you, they will not stop until they sting you. Multiple times. You can run away, and if you gain enough space from them, they'll give up, but as long as you're still in the same general area, they will not stop until they fully drain your health bar. Now the power-ups will be your best friends in this. The clock adds more time for completion, the lightning bolt makes you super fast, and you can easily jump to higher platforms without having to climb, the health restores your... health, and the shield guards you from the jellyfish. Useful as these are, you often wind up collecting them on accident when you're trying to save them for later, because a lot of them are set up on spaces you need to touch if you want to reach certain Krabby Patties. They're in abundance throughout the stage, so it doesn't really matter, but still. I should also mention that the characters continually drop quotes from the show. It's interesting to see how they choose to use some of these. Krabby Patty, watch out for the stingers! Ah, there's one now! Now if you want to collect the burgers while also having time to explore, you better play on easy mode. The other modes only give you just enough time or less to go everywhere you need to go in the stage. Let's also give Patrick a go, since we have these characters to choose. What's his deal? It's like they're competing with Obstacle Odyssey to see who can have Patrick make the weirder face. Also, the way he runs is nothing short of hilarious. Look at him go! So my biggest issue with the game might have to be how unfinished it looks. I don't know what the budget was or how long 3D Groove had to work on this, but it just looks incomplete. The scenery is lacking and the graphics just aren't great in general. One thing that bugs me is how you have to awkwardly jump onto the coral to reach a lot of the burgers. It's like you're mountain climbing in Skyrim. I feel like I'm breaking the game whenever I do this, but it's what they want you to do. It's so weird. Also, whenever you try to jump in this one portion of the game, the camera does this very weird maneuver that gives you a rather unpleasant view of Patrick. I had the most unique figure. Speaking of Patrick, when you get stung by a jellyfish, he gives a very mortified wail of anguish. Get this ah! Ah! What's that? Ah! Ah! I'm sure it was from the show, but in this context, it's a very unusual choice of scream for him. As can be expected, the later stages get much harder as the space outside the Krusty Krab becomes littered with coral. You have to wonder if it's even worth serving the Krabby Patties to the customers after they've been out in the dirt like this. And you wonder why Mr. Krabs is so afraid of the health inspector. As the platforms increase, you have to do a lot more jumping to get the sandwiches than you did before. This is a little troubling because the controls aren't really polished enough to be used in a platform jumping game. You have to be really patient with them, which is hard when you're being timed. Maybe this game was meant to teach patience in the most trying times. I also wish there were more visual differences between the levels. It can get draining to do mostly the exact same thing for 10 stages straight. I will admit though, the difficulty intensifies in the later stages. It's always that last Krabby Patty you can never find. You always wind up running around in terror when you need only one more to win. A strategy I adopted for the last two stages was to go around the edges of the map, collecting all the patties from around there, then slowly circle my way inwards. I recommend either doing this or running around randomly and seeing what you can find. Both have worked out for me. But if you're expecting a remarkable ending, you'd better curb those expectations because all you do is send in your name for a high score. I guess I didn't really expect an ending for a game without any cutscenes, but since the Nick Arcade is down and you can't brag to your friends about having a high score, there's no big motivation to go through all 10 levels anymore. Now let's take a look at Squidward. I'll actually give the developers this. He looks decent. A little crispy when he moves, but he's alright. He's also supposed to be the fastest character, which makes sense since he has eight legs. Now before we close this off, let's take a look at what this so-called jellyfish fever looks like. If you get stung enough times, it says, you've been zapped, and it's game over. I guess it's better than you were snowballed. So that's about it for this game. Overall, it's an interesting game. 
As just an ordinary game you could play online, it's not too bad, but I don't see this as a game worth spending money on. I'm not sure if the game was incomplete or if the devs just didn't have enough time to finish it, but it lacks refinement. The levels are all the same, the space is uninteresting to look at, the graphics aren't exactly spectacular, and the controls are stiff and don't really bode well with what the game wants you to do. A little more time and love would have likely fixed most, if not all, of my issues with the game. Still, it's definitely not the worst game I've covered on this channel. I'd take this over Jumpstart 6th Grade any day. I also feel that calling it a bad game would be a little harsh. It's just a game that needed a little more effort. Now this and the movie weren't the only 3D Groove Spongebob games. Another one was made in the early 2000s and subsequently lost to time, but was eventually recovered. It even received its own commercial. This one was called Spongebob 3D Pinball Panic. Let's check it out. Well, it's pinball, it's 3D, and I'm panicking. Seriously, this game is off the rails. I've never felt more overwhelmed by a Nickelodeon game for as long as I've lived. Let's start from the beginning. According to the story, Spongebob and his friends were seahorsing around and accidentally ended up inside a giant pinball machine. I think you may need to elaborate a little more on that. Is that just a natural occurrence here? We can see the first board in the menu sequence and the infamous Krabby the Clown is visible on a bunch of tiles. Or was it Cheapy the Cheapskate? Just as a side note, if he had gone into his office before putting on his disguise, the kids might have believed him more, but that's completely unrelated. Before you begin, you can choose to play as Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, or Squidward. Then you can choose a board. You only have the Krabby Land board to start out with, so that's what we'll be using, I guess. You can also choose to use the mouse or the keyboard, so let's start with the keyboard. Your goal is to turn all the purple lights on the board green so a giant clam will open its mouth. You tilt the board to move your character across it at lightning speed. You have to hit obstacles hard enough to turn them green, but try not to fall over the side or through the hole in the center. Don't miss the platform. You can't tell me what to do. There's also this jellyfish that launches you whenever you hit it. Right away, I think this game would have benefited from a scorekeeper of some kind. At first, I couldn't tell if the map was just never-ending because I couldn't tell how many lights I had left to hit, but I couldn't find any that I had missed. The game might be fun at first, but it quickly becomes a game of walking against a very unpleasant current because you end up just trying to hit the lights you missed. Kinda defeats the purpose of pinball being a high-energy, fast-paced activity. Then it just becomes aggravating when everything starts throwing you all over the place. Also, to give a bit of advice, do not use the mouse. It's even harder to control and you have way much less freedom with your movement. Oh, that's great, love that. Now here's where the real frustration comes in. When you hit all the lights, it just isn't enough. The clam opens its mouth and you have to climb a slide to roll into it so you can beat the stage and unlock the next board. You think your troubles have ended, but now the real challenge is reaching the clam without dying beforehand. Seriously, this gets ridiculous. It's hard enough to gain momentum to go up the slide, but everything on the board is throwing you all over the place when you're just trying to do one single thing. Did I mention both this game and Spongebob Saves the Krusty Krab are up to four players? It really doesn't make a difference, the game just assumes you handed the computer off to someone else. It's nice that they thought to include the feature, but it isn't really necessary. The next board is the Flying Dutchman's Ship, which I really like as a setting. There's also a big hole in the center you can fall into, and it actually reminds me of the one from the Hyper Bowl Pirate Ship. Now that's a real trip to the past, isn't it? Again, I can't stress enough how infuriating it can be to try and hit the clam at the very end. 3D Groove must have missed the memo that they were creating a Spongebob game for kids. So are you ready for another bit of disappointment? The game markets itself as having six different stages, but all of them are just slightly different variations of Krabby Land in the Flying Dutchman's ship. Yeah, 3D Groove wasn't exactly known for its variety. Wait, what platform? Never forget those famous last words. Whoa, whoa, what's happening? What's happening? What? What? 3D Groove, explain this. I mean, I'm happy I survived the fall, but what? 
Again, I have to reiterate how frustrating it becomes trying to walk on the board while everything is throwing you in a different direction. In this one instance, I have to reach the platform to hit the last remaining lights, but I just can't get my character to touch it. Look at how ridiculous this is. You don't have enough lives to take risks in this game. It's way too easy to fall over the edge or through the center. This game would have been better off just trying to replicate classic pinball rather than giving you a goal to accomplish and boards to unlock. You don't even get an ending for winning. I guess they never got out of that giant pinball machine. This has been a cautionary tale about the dangers of seahorsing around. Now if you really want to try out a pinball game and have the time of your life, I have the perfect suggestion for you. That's right, you can't beat the classics. 3D Pinball Space Cadet, aka Full Tilt Pinball, will always be the definitive pinball computer game. Now, 3D Groove Spongebob games may have had their issues, but along with the other Nick Arcade games, they were a part of many childhoods. Many fondly remember these and would gladly play them again. All in all, that's what matters most. They're relics of the past and welcome additions to the Spongebob library. A little rough around the edges, but as long as someone enjoys them, that's what's most important. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.